player doesn't choose the violin. The violin chooses the player. Hi guys! If you're a more advanced player and you're really serious about the violin, you're probably going to be looking for a slightly nicer instrument at some point. And quite often people look in the kind of three to six thousand dollar price range. So when you're at that level and you're looking for your perfect instrument, there are some boxes that instrument will really have to tick if you want it to work well for you. Now first you're going to have to like the instrument, like if you personally have to think that it's pretty. Because if you think, you know, Ooh, it's a rather plain looking instrument, it might sound amazing, you may always be slightly disappointing. So it's, you know, it's not definitely not the most important thing, but it is something to consider. It has to be an instrument that you really love. It has to have a beautiful sound. Now, beautiful sound is relative. Some people might like a deeper sound. Some people might like a higher sound. There's also what I describe as different types of vowels in the sound. So a sound can have a you know, more open sound, like a Stradivarius, which is like, ah, uh, you know, like a really open sound. It's a kind of sound that could actually penetrate right through to the edges of a big hall. Other people like a slightly sweeter sound, like something that, you know, you might represent it with an oo, like oo, and uh, it's, it's a slightly sweeter sound. It's a little bit more introverted, but still nice, but it has something really beautiful. And other people, they're usually people who are a little bit on the quieter side. They like an instrument that actually has something like a u, like oo, like it's a quite a deep sound it doesn't come out of itself you can probably not hear it very well in a large hall but it'll actually suit quite well in an orchestra maybe not for the first desk but maybe some of the desks are a little bit further but it'll still be really beautiful and the other thing so the instrument has to give you a really good feeling when you're playing it because you have to enjoy playing that's so important and obviously the instrument has to help you with your goals. You have to be able to do on it what you want to do musically. That's really important. And the final thing, that's a thing that I think is really important is that the setup and feel has to be right. Now that's something that can be changed on an instrument. So if you get an instrument that's not 100% right, quite often a violin maker like me can actually get the instrument and they can get the feel 100% right. But be prepared to spend a little bit of money if you've got an instrument that isn't feeling right and you need to get it feeling right. What kind of instrument can you expect in the kind of three to $6,000 price class? So there are quite a few different types. It's not a price class where you'll find any master-made instruments. That kind of price class starts, you know, above $10,000 or, you know, or even $20,000, $25,000. But what you can get is some like really good mass-produced instruments and you can get some nice antique instruments. You know, if you're looking at a workshop, my workshop in China, for example, they have about 15 employees and uh, they're all really well trained. Like these guys have been doing this for between 10 and 20 years. So they're really good at it. Um, I'll show you one of the instruments. So this is my Salvatore Lombardi instrument. It's an instrument that I personally have made for me by one of my workshops. And uh, the makers are amazing. They use a beautiful varnish. So the varnish basically is a traditional recipe from Italy. The timber is really beautiful. It, you know, choosing really good quality timbers. They use some of the well-known models and they do a really beautiful job. So it has beautiful timber, amazing workmanship. Like if you look up close, really good, clean workmanship. The sound is great. So 
So yeah, it has a really nice sound. So that can be a good option because you're going to get some really good value. And this particular instrument is in the five and a half thousand Australian dollar price range. It's been very well made. But you can get equivalent instruments made in Europe, like there are instruments like Ernst Heinrich Roth or some of the Gill instruments, and the equivalent instruments would be somewhere around the eight to ten thousand dollar price class, and uh, and they're really lovely as well. But being made in China, you your labor costs are going to be somewhat lower, so you can get some really good value. So another type of instrument would be my Giuseppe Ziardo instrument. Uh, this is an instrument that I personally designed and one of my workshops makes for me. They use beautiful European timbers and they make it exactly after my specifications. So they do the edge work the way I want the edge work done, so the F holes are where I want them and everything is done exactly the way I want it done. So they're also really good value. Now they're six and a half thousand dollars, but they use all European timbers and have this beautiful workshop, but also the most important thing is that I've actually designed those instruments. So you don't have to pay twenty-five to thirty thousand dollars to get one of my instruments. You'd actually be able to get an instrument that I've designed for about six and a half thousand dollars. So that's really good value as well. Now other types of instruments you can get in that kind of price class are, are actually new German instruments. So one of the instruments, for example, I have like the Alois Sandner instruments, which is a German company, and they're nicely made instruments. They're a little bit less at about $4,200. By the way, I'm talking about Australian dollars here. So the Australian dollar is a little bit lower at the moment, so um, it'd be quite a bit less in American dollars. Also, well-made instruments, you can see that they had to cut some costs. In some of the German instruments, there's some machine work that gets done to cut the costs, so that they're not necessarily all fully handmade, but still using the German know-how, so they're going to be very well made. But German instruments generally in the same kind of price level will be a little bit more expensive. Then there are other options, options like buying an antique instrument. A lot of the antique instruments that you'd get in that price class would be older German instruments and French instruments. Here I have an example of a German instrument. This was made in the 1920s and it's a Hermann Dölling violin. Now Hermann Dölling, the, the company has been around for quite some time. So Hermann Dölling was really well known for making quite good quality instruments in the Magma Kirchen area. That's like the Falkland area of Germany. Now that area produced a lot of instruments. So even in the early 1800s, that area was producing around 20,000 instruments per year. And this all happened because there suddenly was this middle class of people that developed thanks to the Industrial Revolution and everyone wanted to play violin. So they needed places to make instruments a bit cheaper and Falkland became that area. So Falkland became the main violin producing area and by 1900 Falkland was producing over 90% of all instruments in the world. The only area that came close was Mirecor in France. It's in the west of France and quite a few instruments were made there later as well. And especially after the First World War in the 20s, that area became really popular because Germany wasn't kind of all that popular with everyone at that time and having German things wasn't so cool at the time. But anyway, there, there were lots and lots of different makers. So first they had the big factories that would have employed dozens or more people, like maybe even over a hundred. And they were the big instrument making factories. Then there were also some individual makers that employed a few people. 
And then there were some farmers, and in winter there wasn't much to do, so the whole family made instruments, and they just sold them off to the wholesaler. So from that area, all throughout the middle of the 1800s until the early part of the 1900s, a lot of instruments got shipped all over the world. So you can find some really well-made instruments in that area, but you can also find some really rudimentary instruments that you shouldn't even think about playing. What I usually do when I get instruments like that, I restore them to a really good level and then uh, they can actually become some really nice instruments because they've got that bit of history with them. And then there's the French area, the area in Mirko in France, and they had a lot of different makers from Cologne Maison to Nicolas and lots and lots of other makers had their workshops and factories there. This is a Cologne Maison violin which is from the 1920s. It's a bit more than $6,000, but that's Australian dollars. But they can actually be a really good value and they're a nice instrument and they will actually increase in value over the years. So how do you find out if an instrument is perfect for you? You try them. Now, some people may not be able to get to a violin maker and then you need to find a really reputable violin maker that can help you find that instrument and make sure the instrument has a money back guarantee. And then you can, you know, you can maybe have an instrument sent to you. But I would always recommend to try out your instruments. How do you try them? Just try out lots, try them out quickly, and then sort out a few instruments that you really love and focus on them. I did a whole other video on how to try out instruments, so take a look at that. Okay, that's a Cologne Maison, the French violin. It doesn't really work for me, but I know it'll work for some other people. English instrument, probably actually made in France. Not so sure right now, it's got a bit of a deep sound for me. Hmm, nice, so that's a German instrument. That was the Dulling violin. That's the Salvatore Lombardi violin. This is the Giuseppe Ziado violin. doesn't choose the violin. The violin chooses the player. So just remember, find a good reputable violin maker, find a good reputable instrument, make sure you think it's a beautiful instrument, make sure you love the instrument. It should have a beautiful sound. That's a beautiful sound to you. It's got to give you a really good feeling. And just make sure it is what it says it is. Beware people trying to make money out of you. Not everyone has your best interest at their heart. Unfortunately, that's the nature of the violin making business. Find someone who does. So I make my videos to help string players like you really understand your instruments. I think it's so important that you really understand your instruments when you're a player. So if you like what I'm doing, please hit the subscribe button down here and press the little bell next to it. That way you'll be the first to know every time a new video comes out.